What is up everyone and welcome back to a brand new vlog. Now it will be quite a shorter one today but today I'm checking out the car crowd. I have no clue where I am. All I know is freezing and the hat has finally come back out. But there's one very very special car the car crowd have got and David has kindly brought it out for me to film. Very briefly, hopefully before the rain drops. Now check that out, a Spyker C8. For me, this is one of the most underrated supercars and I actually think one that many people don't know about. Now, I could be one that's very clever and watched a lot of videos last night from Shmi and Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear. What is the Spyker and all these facts? And I could just read it all like that, but that'd be boring. So I'm gonna get David to go around the car and tell me a bit more about it. But I've loved the Spyker since, I think I saw my first one back in 2012 at Chelsea Auto Legends and um, it's a very special car to me because I've always loved it and I hear very mixed opinions as as once Jeremy Clarkson said it looks like the bottom feeding fish that you find at the bottom of the sea with that uh, massive grill at the front but the car inside is so unique and so special it's literally like a Pagani inside so we'll go around the car and hopefully take it for a quick spin just look at this beauty finished in black with a green interior I think it's Goodwood green if I'm right in saying um, but yeah like I was saying the grill is just really weirdly done at the front how it's completely open but I think this is what again makes the spiker very unique like you don't normally see it um, got the cool grills at the front and aluminium all around the car but yeah this is very special indeed right so before I go out in the C8 spider I'm trying to work out where is the door handle now there's me thinking I'm being silly, but I cannot see a handle at all. I mean, I thought it was be here, because I can kind of see maybe fingerprints, but I think I'm wrong. I have absolutely no idea, apart from if I was to climb over. I'm baffled. Chiro, you got any, any idea? No, and this is David's party trick, clearly, because he said, can you get in the supercar? <laughs> Does he know how to open the door? So, I was going to twist the uh, petrol cap, or maybe. No, that's the actual petrol cap. <laughs> Here's a petrol cap. See, I am so confused. I thought it'd maybe be a push. No, go on. Right, so yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the best security feature of the Spyker is that no one knows where the door handle is. Oh, Just like similar to a TBR. There's a tiny little button around there, isn't yeah, it? The TBR does the yeah. yeah. So you've yeah. got to click and then lift. As you can see, I'm finally sat in the car and as you could probably tell by the interior, it is just amazing. But if I go to David now, you just tell me a little bit more about the interior and how you know incredible it is. Yeah, it, it's, it is pretty much, I think, most of the most awesome interiors of any supercar I've ever been in as well. Um, I mean, Spyker was originally in uh, the aerospace game. They used to make planes during World War II, so a lot of the stuff you'll see on here, like the propeller steering wheel, the accents around the, uh, the, the vents here, they're all sort of giving back to that heritage, I guess, of where it was uh, back in the airplanes. And then you've got things like the open gear linkage. Yes. This yeah. obviously, a lot of people think that it's sequential, but mm -hmm. it's not, you know, you still have to go over uh, left and right in terms of the changing the gears. Uh, you've got the sort of airplane switches and the bet that I love the best is the uh, oh, yes. Air Force style switch. That is awesome, gear I didn't for the see start, that, yeah. Stop, just like you get on a fighter jet. That is sick. Uh, but they don't make them that kind of steering wheel, do they now? No, this is, uh, so this is chassis number 36. Uh, I think the first 40 so or so spikers had this uh, propeller steering wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason that then only the first few cars had it is because they had to change due to the airbag regulations and they tapped up uh, Lotus and so Lotus Engineering gave them an airbag one, which is, it's just like a normal steering yeah. wheel. So having this, obviously from a safety perspective, not quite so good, but from a exclusivity. But to be fair, if we crashed and that was to your face, I wouldn't mind it because we're in such a cool car. What, so what, nice, way, to what well. way to go out as well. But yeah. one more thing I want to say, yeah. and like I can see, this interior is stunning, the green. How yeah. cool is it? I mean, what do you think of it? Love it. Yeah, this is this is the uh, the only one of one uh, with Goodwood green interior and the jet black exterior. Uh, obviously, I think the subtlety of the green it, it's actually it steps it off the car perfectly. Um, and yeah, I, I just love it. It's great. So off we go, just up the road. And the funny thing is, the handbrake is where I'm sat as well, which is quite funny. But even just experience this car for a little bit, you know, it is so so unique. And listen to that sound. And I'm right saying so this is a. 4.2 litre yeah, Audi V8. 4.2 litre Audi V8, yeah. Let's go down to the end of the room. Very cool. About 400 horsepower, um, rear wheel drive obviously, and about 1200 kilos curb weight. So actually, it's 
slightly quicker than an Audi R8. Yeah. Uh, but the good news about it is it is serviceable at Audi dealerships because most of the drivetrain is obviously made by Audi. So um, it's actually, I mean, for a supercar it's never practical, but as, as supercars go, this one's actually a fairly practical supercar as well. And of course you get the looks everywhere you go. I can imagine the looks must be ridiculous in this car. Yeah, it's definitely not your normal looking like supercar. That's why I love it so much though, because it is just so special and so different. Yeah, I mean that's actually, I mean we've obviously you can park any Lamborghini, Ferrari, whatever, uh, but when we've been going to the shows and things, parking this biker up, it's the one that gets the most attention. You know, people are literally traveling hundreds of miles to come and see a biker because they haven't seen one before. Uh, we even had a guy come over from Holland, uh, especially to the British Motor Show, to come and see the car and take some photos with It's funny you say Holland because this is where it's from, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's Dutch, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so from Holland, yeah. I think it's the only supercar ever made out of Holland, as far as I'm aware. Um, and I think they did a pretty damn good job. Feel the noise. Stunning. It certainly wakes people up. <laughs> So, because it was raining, we are now inside the, like, the HQ of the car crowd, and the Spiker is here with the amazing doors up. But David is about to tell me a bit more history about this car. So, David, up to you. Go on, what are you going to tell me? Surprise me. <laughs> I'm going to surprise you. So, I mean, this is uh, chassis number 36. Mm -hmm. um, so, the car was actually uh, manufactured as one of the earlier uh, Spiker C8s, even though it wasn't actually registered on the road in the UK until 2007. So, it was manufactured in 2003, so it had four years, we think sat in the showroom for, for demonstrating their only right-hand drive, obviously a good with green and jet black interior-exterior combination. So it actually lived a very charmed life, didn't do hardly any miles in its first few years yep. until it was registered in 2007. And then it's done some pretty cool things. So this car is actually featured in the Fast and the Furious movie. Which I recognised, yeah, yeah, straight away. So sat there with, uh, with uh, another player, I think it was um, a spy, I think. It was, um, a, it's a background car, but it still mm -hmm. has that feature. Uh, it's also featured in the London Motor Museum as well. Um, so it's actually been one of the cars that was probably one of the main attractions uh, at the London Motor Museum for a period of time. It's been up to Scotland uh, and owned by Rio Supercar Rentals. So awesome. it's actually been um, rented as a supercar for, for a short period. Uh, and then it's actually done the Gumball Rally as well. So oh, wow. East to West awesome. As well. And which some of my viewers might see, I've seen this at Saywell. What is it, Silverstone? Silverstone. Yeah. yeah. Where else have you been? I feel like there's one more. Uh, Donington. That's, that's it, yeah. Driver. That's the one. Um, so we drove, we were lucky enough to drive around the supercar driver. And I looked to my left at one point and saw two Bugatti Veyrons next to us, which was. A but the cooler driver. thing is, this was more rarer on the day. There was only one of one. There was no other Exactly. Side. So you can have your yeah, 10 yeah. Bugattis there. Yeah, absolutely. You came in the rarest, unique car. So. Yeah, and the same supercar fest um, when we were there as well. Uh, yeah. Earlier on this year on the runway. Uh, again, you know, uh, only one of one. And at Donington, it was actually in the uh, top 20 supercars uh, parade. That's so it, it was, yeah. Uh, it was actually labelled as one of the best 20 supercars in the UK at that time. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a car that catches attention wherever it goes. Um, it's one that I think is incredibly underrated. It's obviously incredibly rare with mm -hmm. 865 people. Uh, and our premise is because we, you know, we believe it's such a great car with such a great chance of appreciation due to that rarity, uh, and that exclusivity that, uh, you know, that we're looking for people who want to invest in that and, and group together to, to buy this car. Awesome. I mean, you just don't get to see a Spiker these days. And like I was telling you, I've been very fortunate to see a few of these throughout the whole seven years of spotting, but you'll never see them on the road because half of them are in collections nowadays. That's it, most of them are stuck away. You know, it's underground garages, isn't it? It's, uh, it's dust gathering on them until something happens to that person and then maybe they get sold on a yeah. state collection. And that's the only time you kind of get to see them as these barn finds. But what we're trying to do here is, is bring these cars out into the light you know, and allow lots of people that love them to get together to buy them because not everyone has the 220,000 to afford a spiker outright. <laughs> but you know, some people might have 200 or 2,000 pounds to put towards it and obviously hopefully uh, also get a bit of appreciation over time as well. But also we have to come and see it, join us here for a coffee at the, at the HQ, um, at the cafe and, and, and enjoy their, their investment car. What have you got here? So there we have it, We're leaving the spiker in there and just, I can't wait for all of this to be open. The car crowd are proper turning this into a cool, 
little area with a racing simulator. Could have a cafe nearby, a lot more cars in there. And uh, it's gonna be awesome. I know you would have seen a lot more cars in there. The V6 Clio looked stupidly cool, but I wanted to focus today's video on the Spyker because to me, I feel like they're a car that everyone needs to appreciate. And uh, although it's a probably shorter, shorter video than normal, just, Wow, so just thank you so much to the car crowd and please check them out on Instagram and all social medias. Um, I'll probably be posting a few TikToks on it. Of course, you'll be seeing this video and on Instagram I would have posted, so please go check them out. And without further ado, please give a like, please share and please subscribe if you haven't already. And I just realized I've got my hat on. It's actually quite warm now. I mean, we've got blue sky now. The rain stopped, but it was amazing to experience that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.